The dry steam low maintenance humidification system combines a reverse osmosis water treatment system with an electric humidifier in a single package. By purifying water and supplying it to the humidifier, the amount of service required is reduced and the time between services is extended. The system is comprised of our 200 series RO system and our vapor mist humidifier, two proven products. The RO system and humidifier are plumbed at the factory and mounted on a single skid for ease of installation. The unit requires 36 inches of access on both sides and front and 18 inches of clearance above for best long-term ease of service. There are only four connections to make when installing the system. Power, water, drain, and control signal. The Vapor Logic controller runs both the RO system and the humidifier. The display on the controller alternates between information about water production and the humidifier performance. The system may seem complex upon initial inspection of the unit plumbing. It is helpful to isolate the unit into subcomponents and learn the water flow path. The most complex section is the RO system, where 98% pure or better water is produced by pumping supply water at high pressure through extra low energy membranes. These membranes are comprised of several layers of a material that is fine enough to strip almost all dissolved solids out of the supply water. This purified water is referred to as permeate water. The remaining water, which contains the stripped out dissolved components, is called concentrate. The permeate water goes to the water storage tank and then on to be used in a humidifier. The concentrate goes in two directions. Most of the concentrate goes to drain and some through the membranes to be recycled. The amount of water returned for recycling is adjustable. The trade-off for recycling is shorter membrane life but less wastewater down the drain. Refer to the Installation, Operation and Maintenance Manual or IOM for guidelines on adjusting the ratio of recycled water to wastewater. Follow the water path from the inlet through the filters and onto the pump section. The first filter is a sediment filter intended to collect the largest particles from the supply water. Next is the carbon filter. Its job is to collect any chlorine or chloramine from the supply water. This filter is an important component in the system to protect the RO membranes from oxidation, which will shorten their life. Cities add chlorine to the water supply as a sanitizing agent. After the carbon filter, the water goes from line pressure to about 100 psi at the pump. This high pressure water is fed to the membrane cartridge, where it is separated into very clean permeate water and a stream of concentrated contaminants. The system shown here has one membrane. Higher capacity systems have two membranes. The permeate water then travels to the storage tank for use in the humidifier, while the concentrate is partially sent to drain and partially recycled. From the tank, the permeate travels up to the humidifier and into the boiling tank. Once evaporated through the boiling process, the steam is piped to the dispersion into the airstream. The low maintenance humidification system has a combination of electronic and conventional controls. The vapor logic controller allows the system to run while monitoring total dissolved solids in the water and demand for steam from the space. It also presents any alarms or messages generated by the system and tracks performance over time. The flow control valves, flow meter, and system pressure gauge are for fine-tuning the system performance. Refer to the manual for flow settings for your system. The pressure switch responds to system pressure levels by starting the RO pump when there is a demand for water and provides functional safety to the system if an overpressure condition develops. While this system requires less frequent and simpler maintenance than a humidifier fed with softened or potable water, Following a few basic steps ensures top performance and maximized lifespan for the system. An important maintenance step is to check and replace the sediment and carbon filters. When the system is first started, use the operational log located in the back of the manual to record the initial pressure drop across the filters. Observe the pressure drop daily and replace the sediment filter when the drop is equal to the initial drop plus 10 psi. Note the flow rate through the membranes, system pressures, and the total dissolved solid numbers, and service the unit as needed. When it is time to service the unit, proceed as follows. Shut off the water supply to the unit and close the water storage tank isolation valve on the RO system header. Use the vapor logic controller to operate the pressure relief valve output. Close the system isolation valve on the header. Unscrew the sediment filter housing and replace the filter.
be sure to center the new cartridge in the housing. Inspect the sealing o-ring for wear and make sure it is properly positioned on the housing. When installing the filter housing, avoid letting the filter cartridge go off-center in the housing. When the housing seats on the filter base, turn the housing an additional 1 8 to 1 quarter turn to seal the system. Repeat this process when servicing the carbon filter. Replace the carbon filter when the test strips indicate the presence of chlorine in the concentrate water. Take an initial sample at startup and then about every two to three weeks to establish a baseline for how long the carbon filter will last. More test strips are available from your local dry steam representative. Changing the membranes is similar to changing the sediment and carbon filters. Start by isolating the system and relieving the water pressure. Remove the U-bolt from the top of the membrane housing and pull the top off of the housing with the pliers. Gently twist the top to break the seal of the O-ring. Pull the membrane out of the tube. When inserting the new membrane into the tube, be sure that the membrane mounted seal is at the top of the membrane housing. Water flow in this system is always from the top of the membrane housing to the bottom, whether there is one or two membranes. Replace the top cap and reinstall the U-bolt. Open the isolation and supply water valves and return the system to operation. After about six months of operation, inspect the humidifier tank for any foreign matter and verify that the float valve functions properly. Test the low water safety switch and check the tank seals for cracks or wear. Get familiar with the VaporLogic screens and watch for changes in system performance. Changes in performance will help identify maintenance needs early and help to keep the system running efficiently and reliably. Pay special attention to the total dissolved solids, or TDS, reading. It is not unusual to see the number at zero when the system has fresh membranes. A TDS reading over 50 parts per million indicates that it is time to change the membranes. If the TDS is allowed to reach 75 parts per million, the unit will shut down until service is performed. When the pump is not running, the TDS number will rise. This is not unusual, and normal operation will show this number dropping after the pump has been running for about 30 seconds. The low maintenance humidification system is designed to provide long periods of uptime, long intervals between service, and short duration maintenance tasks. Inspections at recommended intervals and timely service of the filters and membranes will provide years of maximum performance and trouble-free operation. If you have questions about the operation or troubleshooting process for this system, please call Dry Steam Technical Support.